Good afternoon, everybody. DJ Raven K back on the MIC here at Just Brewery Coffee House, 106 West Commerce. Actually, excuse me, it's West Cypress. I get those two mixed up, David. Yeah. Uh, it's it, and we're inside here talking about your candidacy for District Three yes. District Attorney. That's a lot to say in one yes. sentence, isn't it? Just uh, District Attorney for District Three. District Attorney for District Three. There we go. All right on. Um, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation. Hey, Raven, I thank you for uh, wanting to talk to me. I appreciate it. And I know that, that based off of what I've known about you, you know, on a personal level, um, I am even more convinced that you are the right man for this particular season in the district attorney race. Well, thank you very much. Expound on that. What, what well, do you think you can do? Okay. Well, let me say, the reason I believe I'm the right man is based mostly on my experience, okay? I've um, been a trial lawyer for 37 years, but of that, 17 years of it have been as either an assistant DA or first assistant DA. Um, I have all the experience in the world with regard to prosecuting criminal offenses, uh, including anything from uh, rape to, to murder one, including death penalty cases, uh, drug cases, all of those things. And uh, I'm just very familiar with it. I have the experience. Um, I also have some ideas uh, with regard to if I become district attorney. Well, you know what, David? I know that you have a lot of ideas, and I like your take on the experience. Because sometimes experience is, A, the best teacher, and, B, it's also uh, an opportunity to show people that you have compassion. And in, in the judicial system these days, you kind of need some compassion because you, you, can, you can't just uh, think that, you know, people do make mistakes. That's right. But they should have an opportunity to have a life again. I agree with you. You know, early on in my career, uh, when I served uh, eight years uh, in the 19, 1983 or 1990, I was an assistant DA and first assistant for eight years. And when I got through uh, with those terms, I had a real good friend who was a defense attorney and now is a district judge uh, over in Stevens County. Anyway, he told me, David, you got to remember, not everybody that comes before you is a bad person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was right. And I, and I thought about it a lot. And um, I had I looked back at uh, the earlier years, and I think I didn't realize that as a young attorney. And uh, I, I became seasoned. And I understand that people make mistakes. Not everyone needs to be thrown in prison for their mistakes. There are circumstances and facts with each case that we need to look at. And so, yes, uh, you know, we, we need to look at the entire person, the entire offense, and, and see what was really going on. It's not once they're arrested, throw them away. Don't yes. believe that. Yes, and, and you coming from a prosecutor, prosecutor side of things, that is music to my ears okay. because, uh, you know, I'll be quite honest. I have a tape of past. I'm a yes. former family. Okay. And I remember, you know, a few district attorneys wanting to th- literally throw the book. I understand that. And, and then some at me. You know, now, granted, I did what I did was wrong. You know, right. And I own up to that responsibility. There you go. But God changed my life. And that can happen. And I believe yes. that. Yes. And, and I, I'm glad that you believe that because, you know, in this day and age, people are lacking hope. Yes. And hope leads to uh, desperation. It does. And then desperation leads to you making mistakes that can lead to criminal activity. You're, you're so right. And that desperation will lead people to cross lines that they swore they would never cross. Yes. And and so we got to look at that. And, and it, of course, it depends on the offense. It depends on their background. depends on what, what damage or harm they may have caused to a victim. But, yes, people... We need to look at each individual on an individual case basis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, David, okay, uh, expound a little bit on what you would do as the district attorney for this district. What would you do? Well, I would continue to do a lot of things we're doing now, that is prosecute the violent crime. Violent crime and violent criminals are the ones I believe need to be incarcerated. Yes. Yes. So we would continue to do that. Now, I do think we're facing a problem, and I've been throughout the district, and I think it's more so here in Jackson County than the other counties, and that's our gang problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I, I would like to have a policy where if we get a gang member arrested, that uh, we validate that. There, there is a legal term, a validation of a criminal that's in a gang. Yes. We do that. If they have a gun, there's a gang enhancement statute oh, that we can use. And that's the scariest thing to me for the safety of our citizens right now are these uh, gang members that have no value for human life, and most of them have guns. Yes. And, and I'm fearful of the day when some innocent bystander gets shot as opposed to the other gang member they're trying to shoot. Mm-hmm. But we need to put a curb on this gang activity. Now, a lot of that, though, starts at home. Yes, you know? absolutely. Because so, um, they're recruiting younger and younger they these are. days. They are. We're talking about intermediate school level. We are. We are. You Even know, elementary, to some degree, depends on the family. You know, I, I can't mention the name because a young man is a juvenile, but we have a 14-year-old that's arrested that's hardcore. And I wonder, you know, I know you can't blame everything on parents, but I just wonder where did the young man completely get off track mm-hmm. from a, from his home life and mm-hmm. start believing that mm-hmm. carrying guns, hurting people, selling drugs is the way to go. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We, we probably will never know. But what needs to happen, uh, you know, a real shock to the system needs to happen for that young man. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've seen many of the Scared Straight programs. Yes. And, yes. and I do believe those are effective. Um, but there is a certain point where that individual gets to a point where they, you know, that, that doesn't even affect them. I know. And, and, you know. and there might need to be some time in juvie and mm-hmm. things of that nature before he gets out there and commits that crime. You're right. Because in You're this right. day and age, it doesn't matter how old you are. You're right. And if there is an opportunity to change that behavior, mm-hmm. you, I think you're exactly right. we got to do it. And that inter- like in other cases, is an intervention there yes. to see if we can get them out of that lifestyle. Yes. Um, there again, just because he's doing it. Now, some of them are really bad people. Yes. They're, they're hurting there's, people. There's and, some and bad criminals. I have a different opinion yeah. about that. Yes. But if it's a young man that has gotten tangled up in a mm-hmm. gang mm-hmm. that can straighten out his life, mm-hmm. well, I, juvenile court, we've got to be able to offer him something. Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, there are people that, that are... Like way over the edge. That's right. And they've done they've done so many things in their habitual. That's right. And, and and they're not coming back. No. And they're and they're going to keep going. And those are the ones you have to make sure that they are off the streets. And that's what I'm talking about. We've got to get those hardcore ones off the street. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to use the tools available, like I was speaking about the gang enhancement statute, mm-hmm. the validation. We also have some um, other tools that are available, but we I don't believe we've made use of yet. Mm-hmm. I know in Oklahoma County and Tulsa County, mm-hmm. big cities where they have a lot more gang activity, of course, than we do, yes. there are gang probation rooms mm-hmm. where these individuals are not allowed to do certain things. Like, okay. you can't go to the courthouse unless okay. you've got a case pending. In other words, if they got a gang buddy... Uh, up there yes. on trial, you mm-hmm. can't stack the courtroom with the game with, with the yeah, yeah, and their colors intimidating everybody. That's good. I'm and, glad they got that. Going. So we'd like to try to implement some of those mm-hmm. probation rules for the ones that that are out on probation or have yes. been released from prison, mm-hmm. because that's their standard operating procedures: intimidation. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I think that would help in that regard. But anyway, we've got that. We've got to attack that problem. See, and that's it's experience. I just again, it's experience. You know, the other candidate. You know, I, I know him as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I just think experience speaks volumes. I mean, I, I use forgive the analogy, but you know, uh, granted, even though the Patriots didn't win the Super Bowl, uh, I yeah. do understand that they were more experienced. That's right. But everybody is entitled to their day. Congratulations to the Eagles. But I do know Tom Brady will be back again <laughs> That's uh, in true. the Super Bowl this year. Because what? The experience. That's right. And, and I think, David, you are the man with the experience for this season right now. And, and what's what saddens me, because you know, I drove the Aldous Cab for a little bit. you know, okay. And I got a real big picture I'm sure you did. of things that are going on. I'm you know? sure you and, did. And it opened my eyes. You know, you can't just, just because you're north of town, or east of town where it doesn't affect you, it does affect you inevitably. It will. It, it definitely it will. It will. Now, and, and a lot of these problems aren't just in one part of town. Abs- exactly. They do cover the south, the north. central, and north Absolutely. part of town. Absolutely, yes. Uh, 
especially so, with the kids. It, it's all that's, with the kids. That's right. It doesn't matter. I mean, drug activity, especially the methamphetamine problem in this town, yeah. attacks. It, it has no respect of person, has a respect of gender, You're has so a respect right. of, of status quo. You're so right. And, and, and economic condition has nothing to do. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're making uh, 500000 a year or, t- or 2000 You know, it doesn't. It, it, it affects everyone. Yes. And uh, I think the people I come into contact with, you know, and the family members suffer so much of those young people, and not just young, the people that uh, have those uh, drug problems, the meth, methamphetamine, as you pointed out. It's a very terrible problem it's going on here. It's a pandemic. It is. It is. And it affects everyone that person comes into contact with. Yes. And, yes, they're going to be north, south, south and east middle. and west. Absolutely. So it's something that affects us all. Well, David, thank you very much for taking the time. Oh. And I didn't want to take too much of your time, but I wanted to touch on some issues no. that are concrete no. within southwest Oklahoma, and particularly Altus. No. And, and I do believe that you are the candidate to tackle these issues case by case because lives or a case-by-case situation. You're exactly right. And Raven, I want to thank you for offering me this time to come Mm -hmm. talk to you. Yes. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. DJ Raven Kane and a candidate for District 3 District Attorney. I love saying it like that. I like like the mouthful right there. Thank you, David Thompson. Thompson, And uh, look forward to seeing what you can do for this. Thank you, Raven.